All right guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about modeling real world data. So how we can take data and determine if a linear, quadratic, exponential, or square root function is going to be the best fit for that data. Now, just to go over this real quick, much of this can be done on your graphing calculator, okay? Um, you can do a regression analysis, um, and you would typically just pick um, the regression that has the best R squared value or the value that's closest to 100. Okay, so you can do most of this on your calculator, but this is still good to know. All right, so I'm gonna leave these rules up here and we're just gonna go through a couple problems um, on how you can determine if the data that you're looking at is any of these following, linear, quadratic, exponential, or square root. Okay, so let's go into our first problem. Okay guys, so we're gonna get right into it. Notice I have a table here, I have mass and length, mass being my x and length being my y, okay? So we're gonna go right down the line. All right, we'll start with linear to see if that checks out, and if it doesn't, we'll just keep moving down. So we're gonna start with linear, and notice what it says here. It has a constant first difference between y values, okay? For evenly spaced x values. So notice here we have evenly spaced x values, okay? So we wanna go ahead, and see if we have a um, constant first difference here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is write first difference. Okay. And at this point, all we're gonna do is just subtract. So we're gonna do 32 minus 30.6. So 32 minus 30.6, right? And that will be 1.4. We have 1.4, 33.4, minus 32, 1.4, okay, 34.8, <clears throat> minus 33.4, 1.4, 1.4. Okay, and then we're gonna do 36.2 minus 34.8, that will also be 1.4. Okay, and this trend is going to continue on, right? You can check the last values if you want, but you're gonna to continue to get 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, right? So we have a constant first difference here. Okay, so what this tells us is that this data is going to be linear, it checks out, right? <clears throat> we have evenly spaced x values, and then we have a constant first difference, okay, for our y, which is 1.4, okay? All right, let's try another example. All right, guys, here is our next example. So we have diameter and age, and we're just gonna leave it at that. So diameter is gonna be my x, age will be my y, and this could be for anything, all right, just an example. But again, this is my x, this is my y, and I'm just gonna go ahead and look through, okay, um, some of these possible functions, and my eyes are going towards square root. If you read it, it says evenly spaced y values, right, at the end here. So a constant second difference between x values for evenly spaced y values. Well, notice I have evenly spaced y values here. So I'm going to try this square root and see if it works out, all right? So we have to do a first difference, and then we're going to have to do a second difference. So I'm just going to write first here for first difference. Okay. And all we're going to do is take the difference between our um, x values. So we have 3.6, 3.6 1.6. Okay, and we're going to get 2 here. So I'm going to go ahead and write 2. And we're going to have 6.4 minus 3.6. So 6.4 minus 3.6, we get 2.8. Okay, 10 minus 6.4, 10 minus 6.4, and we're gonna get 3.6. Okay, 14.4, 14.4 minus 10, we're gonna get 4.4. Okay, 19.6 minus 14.4, we get 5.2. Okay, and then 25.6, 25 25.6 25 minus 19, 
one six, and we're going to get six here. Okay. All right. So that was the first difference, but we now have to check for the second difference to see if it's constant. So this will be kind of our deciding point here. So here's our second difference. And we're going to do the same thing, except we're using the values we got from the first difference. So 2.8 minus 2 here is going to be 0.8. Okay, 3.6 minus 2.8, that's going to be 0.8. 4.4 4 minus 3.6 is 0.8. Okay, 5.2 minus 4.4, 4, that's going to be 0.8 as well. All right, and then 6 minus 5.2, well, that's going to be 0.8. Notice here for my second difference, okay, I have a constant, all right, of 0.8. So what this tells me is a square root function would be the best fit, okay, for this data here, okay? So you can expect to be using a square root function here. All right, okay, let's try one more example. All right, guys, so here's our last example here. All right, so notice here we have another table. We're dealing with time and volume. Let's leave it at that, right? It's unimportant, really, what we're talking about. Um, again, we're just using this as an example. So time is gonna be our X, volume will be our Y. So notice I have evenly spaced x values. So I'm just going to make my way right down. I'm going to start with linear, then I'll try quadratic, then I'll try exponential, and I'll see what happens. Okay, so for linear, we need a constant first difference between um, our y values. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if that checks out. So first, I'm just going to write first here. That's for first difference. Okay, so I'm going to do 384. <clears throat> so I got 384 minus... 512, and I get negative 128, so I get negative 128, all right, and then I'm going to have 288, 288 minus 384, and I'm going to get negative 96 here, and you may be saying, well, why don't you just stop at this point, because they clearly aren't constant, right, I have negative 128 and negative 96, well, I'm going to continue this out until the end, because I'm going to then test for a quadratic, and all we'll have to do there is take the second difference. So I'm going to need these values anyways. So even though I can already exclude this data as being linear, all right, I'm still going to go ahead and carry out the first difference. So I have negative 128, negative 96. All right, and then I'm going to do um, 216 minus 288. I get negative 72. Okay, so negative 72. <clears throat> And I'm going to get 162 minus 216. We get negative 54. Okay, and then 121, 121.5 minus 162. And we get negative 40.5, negative 40.5. Okay, so again, we already checked out. We know it's not linear, but now we're going to try to see if it's a quadratic. Because remember, a quadratic, right, also has evenly spaced x value. So I'm just going to go right on to second difference and see if this checks out. So again, we're going to use these values now and just perform the same operation. So negative 96 and negative 96 minus a negative 128, <clears throat> right, we get 32. Negative 72, so negative 72, and then we're going to get minus a negative 96, okay? And we get here 24. Now at this point, notice, right, for our second difference, we can already tell it's not going to be constant. So there's no need for us to continue on here. We can already cancel out. It's not going to be linear. It's not going to be quadratic. Okay? Our next one we want to move on to is exponential. Again, exponential says for evenly spaced x values, which we have here. Except now we're dealing with constant ratios between y values. Okay, so we need to check the ratios between the y values. So we know it's not linear, we know it's not quadratic, all right? Let's erase this. And we're just gonna check the ratios between um, the y values. So how are you gonna do that? You're just gonna do division instead of um, subtraction. So you're gonna do 384 divided by 512. And let's see what that equals. So 384 divided by 512, we get 0.75. Okay, 288 divided by 384. So 288 divided by 384, we get 0.75. Okay, so this is looking good. And we're gonna get 216 divided by 288. 
216 divided by 288, we get 0.75. All right, looking good. 162 divided by 216. Let's see what happens here. 162 divided by 216, 0.75 again. All right, and let's check this last one. I'm not going to write it down. I'll just do it in my calculator. So 121.5. 121.5 divided by 162, and we get 0.75 again. Okay, so that checked out. There's a constant ratio between the y values, right? We have evenly spaced x values. So an exponential, okay, function is going to be best used for this data, okay? So you can expect to be using an exponential. All right, and that is it. Now, just to reiterate here, much of this can be done on your graphing calculator using a regression analysis tool um, and then picking um, the regression with the best R squared value. Okay? Um, however, it's still good to know how to do this by hand and how to pick out um, functions basically from using the data provided. Okay, and that's it.